Tell us actually what happened. Well, that's the, the biggest issue in this country is a, is a mobility scooter is not considered a wheelchair. Right. So it's not umbrellaed under the same disability laws. So in uh, pretty much across most public transportation, it's like, well, you can't do that because that's a mobility scooter. It's not a wheelchair. But it's, but it's, it's your it's wheelchair. It's exactly. Well, it's, except I mean, it you're me... you and people can see that you've got a disability. Yeah. You've got Clearly, a problem. I'm ginger. <laughs> <laughs> but also the scooter, this particular scooter is very small. It's, you know, I've had pride scooters, and they're great because they're the most compact, great turning radius. Mm. I can get on most um, trains, the, even the narrow ones. So like, it was where don't... you'd put it, we became the problem. So you got on the train in Plymouth, yes. and how did this well, problem arise? Well, normally there's more than one wheelchair space, mm. but uh, this particular was an older train, so there was no wheelchair space in the, the dis mm. in the standard class. So they said that we have one in mm. uh, first class, but it's not reserved, so that's fine. But if a wheelchair comes on along the line, you're going to have to get off. And I was like, oh, God, here we I go again. I because there's nowhere else to put your exactly. mobility scooter. Exactly. And I'm like, even though I'm the first one on mm. and it's not pr booked ahead of time, which we're supposed mm. to do, but once again, I was having problems with the booking system, mm. which is another issue with disabled mm. people. Uh, and so we were on the train in the first class area. I managed to get in. It was set perfectly in the spot, plenty of room to get by. Kevin, my partner, was sitting in the seat basically straddling the scooter, and I was sitting in the seats to the side. Yeah. So you then got out of your mobility scooter... We're seeing it now, Ruth, seat. so we yeah. are actually just at what happened, and this was filmed by your partner, Kevin. Can we just hear what, what's being said here at this stage? No, we don't now. OK, right, so well, look, you're obviously quite distressed here, and uh, you were in... That area looked like it was the... The vestibule area. Yeah, between carriages. Yeah, but the uh, problem was somebody... A woman got on with the pram. Yes. And what, had so it was an hour into the journey, the and this woman came on, it was all this ruckus, and she couldn't see me, so thought it was Kevin. So it was like, I, I've got my baby, and I've got a bad arm, and, and he's like, I've got a bad arm too, and my wife's, you know... Just, mm. Anyway, I was like, grab the camera. So I got up, backed up into the vestibule, and I'm like... This isn't right. I mean, I, it's not a, I was told if it was a wheelchair and I could oblige that, but not for a baby pregnant. So when the guard came along, the decision was he had to decide, so there's a woman here with a baby and a pushchair yep. and you with your mobility scooter, yep. and he decided that the pushchair should take priority yes. over you. Yes. What did you say to him at that point? This is wrong. Mm. It's, this is blatantly wrong and my partner Kevin was freaking out and that's why when we backed up into the vestibule it started to escalate because he couldn't give me a good reason. He just started yelling, where's your papers? Where's your papers? And I'm like, what are you, the And Gestapo? then he went on the tannoy, I believe. Oh, and that was the icing on the cake is I just had a feeling, I said, give me the camera and I kind of switched it on a little late but all of a sudden over the tannoy, oh, we're going to be delayed in Taunton because the woman in the mobility scooter is causing problems. <gasps> so we'll be delayed indefinitely until this matter is resolved. And I was just, I sunk, I shrunk, I, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. I'm a very strong woman, I'm not a victim, but that... Look, oh, can, I, can I ask you, what was he asking you to do with your mobility scooter? Well, the... And this is where I shrunk, and I want, at this point just wanted to give in. I didn't. He mm. threatened to call the police, and I didn't want to get kicked off because this is my livelihood. I do shows all over the country. You're a comedian. We I'm a comedian, that, yeah. yes, and I travel all over the country, and this is my form of transportation. Now I'm thinking, I'm going to get kicked off the train. How am I going to get to my gigs? And so I said, okay, I'll stay in the vestibule. And he goes, but you can't sit in the scooter. And I'm like, okay, so now I have to move the scooter back and forth every time we get to a station. I have to get off my seat, walk on a moving train, get on the scooter. And he goes, well, I'll move it for you. I'm like, you're not supposed to touch my scooter. What if you break it? And um, generally getting around, you said you're a comedian, you travel a lot. Getting around generally on public transport or planes, trains, you know, how, how is that for you in day-to-day -day uh, life? It is a very big challenge. Unfortunately, it's not just one particular um, com train company. It's uh, all over. They, they're all independent, so they all have their own rules. Northern Train Line flat out refuses mobility scooters. So I can't even go to that part of the country without a ride. Uh, I, Lothian bus lines in Edinburgh, where I go up for the festival, can't get on any buses up there. Is, uh, one thing I would say, Tanya Lee, is that so many people do have mobility scooters yes. now who might not be registered disabled. Yes. They just have a problem getting Yes, but uh, there's a mobility. certain amount of common sense in all of yes, this. If you look course, at Tanya Lee and realise yeah, uh, that she's not there because she's obese yeah. or, you know, Which is just too lazy to walk or whatever. I presume with that guard, common right. sense, 
you would think would say well, you had more need well, than somebody... Well, Great Western there. Railways, they, I mean, they, their managing director's been in touch and he says, look, this shouldn't have happened. We've been in touch with Tanya Lee to apologise directly. Mm -hmm. We want to put things right and have already rebriefed our staff and are reviewing our training. We're very sorry about Sunday. We look forward to talking to Tanya Lee in detail about what we might be able to do. Mm -hmm. But I still would like to know what they're expecting you to do with... With yeah. this. I know, it's, uh, that, that's so why this is so shocking. I mean, there are people saying here, um, Julie says, a pram can be dismantled. Absolutely. Uh, mother and baby could just take a seat. There's no excuse for this. How dare they humiliate this lovely lady? It's just disgusting. Oh. Uh, this is disgraceful, says Sarah. I think prams fold up and leave the space. Well, and, and the woman them. in front of me on the seat, she had a child, a toddler that was really rambunctious, and she folded up, put it up high, no problem. Mm. But then this woman, you know, had quite a bigger pram, but she also had a, a, a car seat underneath, which she could have taken, put the sleeping child if that's in the pram and put it on the table. I mean, that would have been, a, I think, a reasonable solution.